The main switch cluster located at the top right of the dash panel houses two USB outlet plugs and a 12 volt cigarette style power outlet below. The rear loading light switch, the interior dome light switch, two spare switches, two spare switch slots and the driving light switch. The switch panel below contains a cigarette lighter and has two spare switch slots, the engine fan manual override switch and the hazard light switch. The Bluetooth compatible CD radio player is located in the top slot and features a USB input for multimedia device connections. The UHF radio is located below the CD radio player and the handpiece is conveniently located in the centre of the dash. The cabin heater air conditioner is located below the UHF radio. To get the most efficient performance from your heater air conditioner system, keep the following in mind. Turn the air conditioner controls off when cooling is not required, except when demisting the windscreen. When the air conditioner is not in regular use, operate it for 10 minutes each week to lubricate the seals. The extra gauge panel houses all the optional gauges. The optional axle temperature gauge may be installed in your Kenworth. A set of two gauges, one for each drive axle, indicates the lubricant temperature in each drive axle. The temperatures indicated will vary with the kind of load you are carrying and the driving conditions you encounter. Very high temperatures, above 121 degrees, signal a need to have the axle lubrication checked. The optional transmission oil temperature gauge indicates the temperature of the oil in the transmission. Watch the gauge to know when the transmission is overheating. If it is over 120 degrees, have it checked by an authorised service representative. The optional suspension air pressure gauges indicate the amount of air pressure in the air suspension springs in kilopascals. Air pressure in the spring is related to the rear axle load. The greater the rear axle load, the greater the pressure in the airbags. These gauges can be used as a handy guide when loading to determine the load on the axle group. But first you will need to weigh your vehicle when it is fully loaded then note the gauges reading in kilopascals. Never rely on the gauges as an accurate measure of the load's weight. Always use a registered weigh bridge. The engine oil temperature gauge indicates engine oil temperature. Do not exceed the maximum engine oil temperature recommended by the engine manufacturer. The normal operating temperature for a Cummins X15 engine is 93 to 118 degrees Celsius. However, for more information see the engine operation and maintenance manual. The air pressure gauges indicate the amount of air pressure in the brake system in kilopascals. The front air pressure gauge shows the front service tank air pressure and the rear air pressure gauge indicates the pressure in the rear service tank. Ensure the air pressure registers more than 690 kilopascals in both service systems before you move the vehicle. If the pressure in both circuits is too low for normal brake operation, a warning light in the left hand warning cluster will glow and an audible alarm will sound. The main dash panel houses the warning light clusters and standard gauges. The tack hour meter measures the engine speed in revolutions per minute. Watching the tack hour meter is important for efficient driving. It will let you match driving speed and gear selection to the operating range of your engine. The tack hour meter incorporates an engine hour meter that displays the total number of hours that the engine has been run. It cannot be reset to zero. The speedometer indicates the vehicle speed in kilometers per hour. The odometer in the centre of the speedo has a multiple purpose function display and can be used to calibrate the speedometer and records the kilometres your vehicle has travelled. The trip odometer tells how many kilometres the vehicle has gone on a particular trip. To use it, press the button on the speedometer. The engine coolant temperature gauge indicates the temperature of the engine coolant. Under normal operating conditions, the coolant temperature gauge should register between 80 degrees Celsius and 103 degrees Celsius. Oil pressure. It is important to maintain oil pressure within acceptable limits. If oil pressure drops below the minimum kilopascals, an oil pressure warning lamp in the left hand warning light cluster will light and the stop engine light will come on. If the oil pressure fails to rise within 10 seconds after the engine starts, stop the engine and determine the cause. The fuel level gauge indicates the approximate total amount of fuel in the fuel tanks. It's important to never let the fuel level drop below a quarter full as this can cause the fuel to overheat because the fuel also circulates to cool the ECM and injectors. If your truck is equipped with a Selective Catalytic Reduction or SCR, it uses diesel exhaust fluid at blue to reduce emissions from the diesel engine. The DEF is injected into the exhaust gas upstream of the catalyst. DEF is consumable and needs to be replenished. The low DEF warning light will illuminate when the DEF level is at 12% to warn the operator to refill the SCR system. At 6% the light will start to blink and the engine will derate. 
The pyrometer gauge indicates the engine exhaust gas temperature. Since it responds almost immediately to changes in exhaust gas temperature, the pyrometer is an excellent indicator of engine output. Monitor the pyrometer in conjunction with the tachometer and manifold pressure gauge. On long steep grades, observe the pyrometer when the temperature reaches 550 degrees Celsius, change down a gear to lower the temperature in the turbocharger. The pyrometer can be a useful aid to operating your truck more efficiently and avoiding sudden changes in engine operating temperature. See your engine owner's manual for maximum temperature recommendations. Your manifold pressure or turbo boost gauge indicates the power your engine is putting out by showing the amount of turbo boost. When the engine is at idle or coasting down a hill, the boost pressure will be at zero. When climbing hills, the boost pressure will rise as the throttle is opened up. If the boost pressure is low when the throttle is fully depressed on steep pulls, it may indicate there is a problem with the engine. Consult your nearest authorised dealer to have it looked at. The voltmeter measures charging voltage at the alternator. Normally it would be 12 to 14 volts. Even with a healthy charge or start system, the voltmeter may fall well below 12 volts during engine cranking. If the voltage drops below 12 volts and stays there, have the electrical system checked by a qualified auto electrician. Gear display indicates to the driver current selected transmission gear. The display will also flash the target gear when in neutral during a shift. The optional turbo timer helps protect the turbocharger from premature failure. The most common engine idle timer fitted to Kenworth trucks has the option to select half, one, two, three, four or five minutes before shutdown after the truck has been safely parked and the key removed. There is also provision to shut down the engine instantly if required. Engine manufacturers recommend engines be idled for a few minutes to allow the turbocharger to cool down and normalise while maintaining a flow of engine oil to its bearings. Headlight switch. To turn on the park lights, rotate the headlight switch to the first click and rotate the switch to the second click to turn on the headlights. In the unlikely event of a failure to the main cab power circuit breaker, resulting in total loss of power to your vehicle while driving with the headlights on, Kenworth have incorporated a safety feature which enables the left hand headlight to remain on. This affords the driver forward vision at night to coast the vehicle to a halt safely. If this event occurs, then the main circuit breaker located in the battery box needs to be reset to restore power to the vehicle. The panel dimmer switch is located on the left hand bottom panel next to the steering column. Pressing the top of the switch will dim the panel lights and pressing the bottom of the switch will make the panel lights brighter. The auditable alarm is an adjustable multifunctional device used primarily as a warning alarm for low air pressure, engine oil pressure, engine eye coolant temperature and low coolant level. The volume of the alarm can be reduced by rotating the outer casing in either direction. The park brake valves are located in the left panel under the main dash. The yellow diamond shaped knob on the dash controls the truck parking brake. The red octagonal knob controls the air supply to the trailer. To release the full combination brakes, allow the truck air system to build up to operating level. The yellow knob may now be pushed in, which will supply air to the truck's spring brakes releasing them. The red knob may be pushed in to charge the trailer system. With both knobs pushed in, air is now being supplied to both the trailer and the truck spring brake. All brakes are released. To apply the park brakes, pull out the yellow parking brake control knob and the red trailer air supply control valve will automatically apply. Always apply the park brake before leaving the cabin. Your Kenworth vehicle may have an air suspension deflation system which allows air in the suspension to be exhausted by using a switch on the dash. The purpose of this feature is to allow you to lower your truck to get under a trailer or to empty a tipper. You will note a guard over the switch. This prevents you from accidentally deflating the air suspension. Do not operate the air suspension deflate switch while driving. Sudden deflation while your vehicle is moving can affect handling and control and could lead to an accident. The switch labelled interaxle diff lock controls the power divider or interaxle differential lock. By moving the switch, you can lock or unlock the main differential when the vehicle is stopped or moving below 40 km an hour. When you lock or unlock the differential while moving, let up momentarily on the accelerator pedal to relieve torque on the gearing and allow full engagement of the clutch. That's the mechanism that locks the wheels. If your vehicle has an automatic transmission, it may be necessary to shift the transmission momentarily to the neutral position to allow the main differential lock splines to fully engage or disengage.